Welcome back to another episode of our measurement tutorial series. In this video, we're going to take a look at a common household tool, the ruler. So let's understand a little bit about the parts of a ruler before we explore how to use one. First things first, I've got a, a ruler here that you might find at a local store. It's a simple one foot long ruler, a wooden ruler, and we see that it has two sides here. Visually, what do we notice is different about the two sides? If you're commenting that the lines here vary in length, but the lines here seem to be most of the same, you would be correct. We also notice that the numbers go much higher on this side. If we look, we can see the numbers go all the way up into about 30, whereas this side, the numbers are a lot more spread apart. The reason for this is that this side is actually the metric system, and this side is the U.S. customary system. Now, that also goes by a couple other names, such as standard, imperial, and British systems, but you know, U.S. customary will work for this. A lot of rulers will mark what side you are looking at over here by the zero mark. So here we see we're using inches on this side. And when we flip it over to the other side, we see this is using centimeters. So that also is a clue as to which side we're on. We're going to stick to the inches side here for this video. Understanding the parts of the ruler also means we need to understand what the lines stand for. And in looking at these lines, we notice that the lines vary in length. The reason for this is how it splits up the value of each of these lines. I'm going to go ahead and mark the whole inch here. And the longest line, the one that's got the number next to it, is always going to be the whole inch line. And so going from one whole inch to the next, we see that we get lines that are shorter. The way we want to do this is we want to look at um, each progressive shorter line. So the next shortest line is halfway in between. So if this is a whole value of the number one, what here we have, this is a half inch mark. So this is one half. The next progressively shorter line is going to be the line here, which is a little bit shorter than, than this line, and it's halfway in between this half. So on this line, we get one fourth. Now we can go a little bit smaller to this line here. This line, the line is one eighth. And then we get to the shortest line, this line right here. And this line, we snake that arrow down here, this line equals one sixteenth. So we notice that the bottom half of that fraction keeps doubling in size. And every time it doubles in size, with the top number staying the same, we're actually having the length. So we have a one inch mark, a half inch mark, a quarter inch mark, an eighth inch, and a sixteenth inch. Now it is possible to find rulers that do not use sixteenth inch marks. Some will come as just one eighth inch. You will also find some measurement tools out there that go down into thirty seconds of an inch. And that would be a line right here in between these two. A good example of where you might find that is actually in the first few inches of a measuring tape, commonly used for construction. Okay, so now that we understand these parts here, let's explore how we're actually going to use those. I'm going to measure the width of this wheel. I've got a problem though. If I try to line the ruler up like this, it's kind of hard to make sure that I've got it perfectly lined up with the edges. So that's not really a good technique. I could set the ruler on top, but then I can't actually see the edges. I could put the ruler underneath, but again, I can't perfectly see the edges, and I could still make a mistake when I line it up. So what can we do? Well, one thing we could do is to get another straight edge. So I've got a straight edge that I'm going to use here, or at least a makeshift straight edge here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to visually, I'm going to set this down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my um, wheel so it's right up against that edge. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the first step of measuring, and that is to line my object up with zero. On a lot of rulers, zero is not actually the edge of the ruler. It's one mark in from the edge of the ruler. Be careful of that. The reason why they do that is if this edge gets worn down, you can still see that whole inch mark. But if you use this as zero and that edge gets worn down, your ruler is no longer accurate. 
So I'm going to line that line up with the edge of these blocks here. And I'm going to go ahead and very carefully make a mark right there. Okay. I've got to hold this down. I don't want my ruler to move. I don't want my wheel to move. So I'm going to very carefully pick this up. I'm going to go against the ruler and just move this over until it's just barely touching the edge of the wheel. And when I look, I see that it actually lines up with this mark right here. So knowing this is the mark I want, I'm going to move this out of the way and make an edge. Okay, so now I've got my two lines here. These are the lines I'm going to use. So I make a mark on a piece of paper. Now it's much easier to take that measurement because I can just line my ruler up. So now let's, what's the next step? The next step of measuring, I want to know how many whole inches did I cross. So I've crossed one, two whole inches, but I did not cross this three. So I'm going to write down a two. The next part is going to be my fraction because I'm going to be working on these lines, which are less than one. So let's get a little fraction symbol here. And now what I want to do is I want to go how many lines after the two before I get to the end of the wheel. And let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I've got twelve lines to get from the two to where I made my mark. The last thing that I want to do is I want to count how many lines go from one whole inch mark all the way to the next. Well, I already know this is 12, so let's just continue counting. 13, 14, 15, and this is the end of that whole inch, so 16. And I'm going to write 16 here. And there's my measurement. I've got uh, 2 and 12 16 inches for the diameter of this wheel but there's still one more step that I need to consider. I need to take, for that last step, what I need to do is I need to reduce this fraction. Anytime I can reduce the fraction, it's going to be beneficial in the end. It can make it a little, or, little simpler to portray that measurement to somebody else. A good rule of thumb is I want to reduce these numbers. I want to half the top and the bottom until one of the two numbers, the top number, is an odd number. Once it becomes an odd number, I cannot half it anymore or else I'm going to have a decimal. So what's half a 12? Well, half a 12 is going to be 6, and half a 16 is 8. So now 2 and 6 eighths inches. But I do not have an odd number yet, so let's go ahead and half it again. So half a 6 is 3, and half of 8 is 4. Now my top number is an odd number, which means I cannot reduce this fraction anymore without turning it into a decimal on the top. So this is the final measurement for my wheel. Real quick, let's review those steps. Step one, I'm going to line up my object with zero. Step two, I want to count how many whole inches I crossed. Step three, I'm going to count how many lines after the whole inch that I crossed. And step four, I want to know how many lines in between from one whole inch to the next. The very last thing is to reduce that fraction as best I can. And those are the steps for using a ruler. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our content here at MythBadger Videos.